We open on a pretty badass sequence where a hidden cobra base in the desert suddenly vomits out a thousand planes and tanks and those little bubble pod things. Where could they be going? To attack G.I. Joe, you say? Well, this is new. The Joes seem surprised that Cobra managed to build a base so close to theirs. But then, given their lax policies on uniform code and allowing pets at work, I think it's safe to say that this highly trained special mission force isn't exactly as highly trained as we've been led to believe. Flight pods dead ahead! Oh, those things are called flight pods. I wonder if kids are trying to eat those too. In the heat of battle, all the Cobra stuff vanishes and a voice declares the simulation over. Just like in that one good episode of Star Trek and the 50 other crummy episodes that use the same trick. The Joes raid the mysterious compound and discover that it was actually all a test. Just like in those 80 other Star Trek episodes. And that they're going to be replaced by computers. Just like, yeah, okay, you get the idea. Actually, the computer thing called Watchdog is meant to be in charge of the Joes now. It was created by this scientist who definitely doesn't work for Cobra, why would you even suggest such a thing? You're a crazy person. The government just wants its team of well-equipped army men to take orders from a computer. Because computers definitely know better than people. Especially now in the year 1986. This all completely checks out. Watchdog demonstrates its competence by having the Joes sink a yacht called the Cerebus. So I guess Cobra are big fans of Dave Sim? I mean, as long as you jump off after Jaka's story, I'm cool with that. Those were some good comics before that dude lost his damn mind. Turns out the Joes wrecked the thing without a trace, which baffles Shipwreck because I guess he already forgot about the whole hologram thing? Actually, to his credit, CPO Delgado, which I guess is Shipwreck's actual name and rank, hey, he's a chief, good for him, wanders off and continues looking for the Earth Pig. I mean, boat. Look, I just read Cerebus, and it's gonna be a real struggle not to drop a bunch of references in here that only six of you are going to get, and four of those six are gonna be people I really don't want to talk to. But I'm gonna try to do my best, okay? Meanwhile, at Cobra HQ, my man Cobra Commander is doubled over in laughter about this latest scheme. I totally called it. He's particularly tickled by the idea that the U.S. government is actually paying to help screw over G.I. Joe this time, and, uh... Yeah, that's actually pretty funny. And apparently the final phase in this plan involves wrecking Joe headquarters with a giant drill. Because, uh, sure, why not? The whole middle of the episode is just the Joes on assorted wild goose chases, and I really do not want to tell you just how much time I wasted trying to find a clever way into some goose, mongoose, snake, cobra pun. Rest assured, it was a lot of time. Like, however much time you think it was, probably double that. Meanwhile, Shipwreck locates some actual cobras near the decoy site that Watchdog sent them to. Which seems... Sloppy. But they do manage to shoot him down, and he wakes up in a hospital room with that creepy-looking scientist who, as I mentioned before, definitely doesn't work for Cobra. You work for the snakes? Oh, I guess he does. Huh. Who saw that coming? Then Cobra Commander and Destro just spill the entire plot to Shipwreck because I guess they've never seen a Bond movie before. Or Austin Powers. Okay, we're like a decade away from Austin Powers still, so I suppose they get a pass on that one. But still, you should definitely know better, dummies. I'm surprised you don't call him long distance and brag. An excellent idea. Yes, let's reach out and crush someone. Okay, somehow that ill-advised idea plus that terrible pun equals completely delightful. But that's just because Cobra Commander is easily the greatest fictional character ever created. In case I hadn't made my feelings clear this far into the series. I mean, come on, look at this. Oh, hello, Scarlet. I must have gotten the wrong number. I thought I was calling a scrapyard. <laughs> Surprising no one, this results in Cobra's defeat. Hey, I don't always need to be surprised by the destination. Sometimes it's enough to just enjoy the journey.